Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so let's have a look at question 8, 2018. The diagram shows a section of a garden divided into three parts. In the diagram, the length of PR is 3.3. Uh, the length of PQ is 6.5. And the length of QT is equal to QS. So QT is equal to QS, which is equal to 8. The angle QRP is a right angle. The angle PQR is alpha or like, looks like an A, and the angle RQS equals beta. That looks like a B. Okay, so use the theorem of Pythagoras to find the length of RQ. So cross here. Okay, so when you're doing that, you can see that that side RQ belongs to two triangles, this one up here, or of course it could be this one here. So have a look and see which triangle makes sense to take. Now you don't get a choice in this one because they said use the theorem of Pythagoras, okay? And Pythagoras' theorem only works on right angled triangles. Same as sine cos tan. These all only work on right angled triangles. So this is a non right angled, so I can't use that one. I am being forced to use the triangle down the bottom so that I can use um, Pythagoras theorem. So 3.3, 6.5, there's my right angle. Um, I put an F into it and there's my X. Okay, so Pythagoras theorem from the log tables, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And remember always that C is, um, C is your hypotenuse. Your hypotenuse is always the side opposite your right angle. Okay, so you have to go 6.5 squared is equal to the other two sides squared. Okay, now I can call it B squared or X squared. Let me call it X squared, seeing as I've called it X in the diagram. So 6.5 squared then, 6.5 squared is 42.25 and that's equal to 3.3 squared, which is 10.89 plus x squared. Okay, so minus 10.89 from both sides because we're solving for um, x squared. So 42.25 minus 10.89 and I am getting 31.36 being equal to x squared. I don't want x squared, I want x the side. So the opposite of squared is square root. So x is equal to the square root of 31.36. Or x is equal to 5.6. I'm looking up here to see what units I'm in. So meters, okay? If you read the front of your exam paper, it says marks may be deducted if you do not include units. Okay, so make sure you put in the units. Uh, part B then said, show that alpha is equal to 31 degrees. Okay, so again, let's draw the, the triangle. Um, 3.3, 6.5, that's my alpha angle. And we've just worked out that he is 5.6. Okay, so a right angle triangle again. Back to, I don't know where I'm putting them in as Fs, but right angle triangle again. So my choices to solve it are sine, cos or tan or Pythagoras' theorem. Now Pythagoras' theorem only has sides in it. I know that because it's got small letters and the log tables calls the sides small letters, whereas sine, cos and tan do have an angle. Okay, you can see the capital letter, which is what the log tables calls our angles. Okay, so this is going to be a sine cos tan question because it's looking for an angle within right angled triangle. Okay, so let's label our sides. So hypotenuse here, the side opposite the angle in the question is opposite. And up the top then must be adjacent. 
Okay, so our rhyme, silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America, or oh hell, another hour of algebra, whichever you prefer. Right, what's unusual about this question is you have actually got all three sides. So what that means is it doesn't matter whether you use sine, cos or tan. OK, and I'll do it. I'll do it with two of them to show you that it doesn't matter. And then you could do it with the third if you wish to prove it. OK, so the one I would take um, in this question would be the one where they've given me two sides in the question. OK, um, the 3.3 and the 6.5. And the reason I take those two is in case I've made a mistake working out the other side. OK, so I'm going to take opposite and hypotenuse for my first one. So which one, sine, cos or tan, links opposite and hypotenuse together? OK, well, there's my O, opposite and H for hypotenuse. OK, so the first one I'm going to do it with is sine. And I'm going to say sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of the angle equals opposite, which is 3.3 over the hypotenuse, which is 6.5. OK, um, I'm just going to put that into the calculator as a fraction and see what it comes out with. Yeah, it's a big long uh, decimal number, so I leave it there as a fraction. OK, so I don't want sine of alpha. I want alpha at the angle, so I need to get rid of this sine. So the opposite of sine is sine inverse. So what I do to one side then, I have to do to the other. But by doing that, sine and sine inverse cancel. So you're left with alpha being equal to the sine inverse of 3.3 over 6.5. So let's go the sine inverse of 3.3 over 6.5. Just do that. Sine inverse of 3.3 over 6.5. And I get 30.51 degrees. And then to the nearest degree, it's 31 degrees. OK, so that's it with sine. Um, like I said, you could have used any of them. So will we do it with just another one just to show? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Will we pick tan for only because it's there? So with tan, tan of the angle is equal to, you must take the opposite side over the adjacent side. And you'll see they just each take a different pair of, a, a different combination of sides. So in this one, tan of alpha is equal to opposite 3.3 over adjacent 5.6. Just like before, instead of sine inverse, I use tan inverse because tan inverse cancels with tan. So alpha, the angle, is equal to the tan inverse of 3.3 over 5.6. So let me put that into the calculator, 3.3 over 5.6. And I get 30.51 degrees again, which is 31 degrees. OK, and you'd get the same if you took cause as well. OK, so hopefully that will help to reassure you that it's not... Um, that you take the wrong one. It's that normally we only have two sides. So normally we're only able to take one. If you've information about all three sides, you can take any one you want. Okay, so now the next part is saying, using the value of alpha given in part B, find the value of beta. So back I go to the diagram again. So I now know that this one down here is 31 degrees. Okay, and they're asking me what's beta, okay? And I'm going to draw my protractor here because now there's a straight angle. OK, and as you know, a straight angle. Is 180 degrees. OK, so therefore beta is equal to 180 degrees minus that 31 degrees that I just found. Which is 149 degrees. OK, so your straight angle. Use the cosine rule to find the length of RS. Give your answer correct to the nearest metre. OK. So, 
Let's see if I can take the diagram, if it'll take from me. Okay. Right, use the cosine rule to find the length of RS. So that's that side up there. Give your answer correct to the nearest meter. Well, the first thing I would write do is because they've told me it's the cosine rule, let's write it down and let's take the marks for that. Okay, right. So what do we need for the cosine rule? I need to work out the length of RS, which is up here. Okay. So to, to be able to work that side out, I need to know the other two sides, because you can see I have A, B and C. So I need to know this side and I need to know this side. And I need to know the angle across from the side that I'm finding. You see little a across from, from capital A. So that's why I had to find that angle beta there. Okay, so that angle beta was equal to 149 degrees. Okay, so let's fill it in. So that side that I need x squared is equal to RQ squared. What do we get for RQ? 5.6. plus the eighth squared minus two times 5.6 times eight times cos the angle across from it, okay? So just to explain, I'm just gonna draw that ang this triangle down here as best I can, okay? Um, and it looks nothing like it. So let me see if I can fix it. So he's actually straight. Okay, so he's 5.6, he's 8, he's X, and he's 149 degrees, okay? So what I'm saying is the cosine rule says that this side is equal to this side squared plus this side squared minus 2BC cause of the angle between them, okay? So they are the values that I filled in there. I tend to put all that into the calculator in one go because it's just numbers. Okay, there's no letters in the minute. There's no algebra in the middle of it. So I can put it into the calculator. So 5.6 squared plus eight squared minus two times 5.6 times eight cos 149. And I'm getting X squared to be equal to 172.162. And of course I need X the side, not X squared, okay? And anyway, 172 was miles away from eight and 5.6. So hopefully that will be your flag to know you're not quite finished yet. You have one other step, which is to get the square root of it. So I'm getting 13.12 meters for that side. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Now, SQT is a sector of a circle whose center is Q. Find the length of the arc TS. Okay, so again, let's copy the diagram onto the next page. So we always have it there in front of us. Okay, so SQT is a sector of a circle whose center is Q. Find the length of the arc TS. Okay, give your answer in meters correct to one decimal place. Okay, so if we go back to the area and volume section of the log tables, which is here, and you go onto the next page, you'll see there's a whole section on arcs and se sectors, okay? And there's two formulas, L, which is the length of a sector, okay? or there's A for the area of a sector. Okay, so we're being asked for the length. There's also two versions of the formula. There's two ways you can measure angles. You can measure angles in what's called radians or angles in degrees. So we're in degrees, okay? So it tells me I'll find the length of that arc by going two pi r. So two pi r is actually the formula for the circumference of a circle, two pi r gives me the full circumference and then theta degrees over 360 well 360 degrees is how many degrees that's in a full circle and so it says well how many degrees in your part your sector 
Okay, so it's two pi r, and then it's saying, well, what fraction of the circle are you dealing with? Okay, so L is equal to two pi r theta over 360 degrees. Okay, which means that if that's the sector I'm looking at, okay, he's eight, he's eight, I need to know this angle here. Okay, so how am I gonna know that angle there? Well, I'm hoping that you see vertically opposite angles as such. So therefore, if he's 31 degrees, then this one up here must also be 31 degrees. Okay, the other way you could do it is to see a straight angle here. So we know a beta is 149 degrees. So subtract that again from 180 and you'll get the 31 degrees. So whichever way you see it, you have to work out that that angle there is 31 degrees. Okay, so then you fill it into your formula. So it's equal to two pi, your radius is eight. Okay, it's from the center out to the edge and it's 31 degrees over 360. Okay, so put that into your calculator, two pi multiply by eight, multiply by hit the fraction button, 31 over 360. And I am giving getting 62 over 45 pi or in decimal 4.328 and to one decimal place 4.3 meters. Okay, the next question said then find the area of the sector SQT. Okay, so back we go to the log tables now for the area formula. So again, it's pi r squared, which is the area of a full circle. Look at that, pi r squared. And it's again saying, well, what fraction of the circle do you have? So we roughly have a tenth of the circle thereabouts, a little bit less. So get the area of the full circle and then what fraction have you? Okay, so the area is equal to pi r squared theta over 360 degrees. So it's equal to pi times eight squared times 31 over 360. So shift by 10x to get my pi by eight squared, multiply by hit the fraction button, 31 over 360. And I'm getting 248 over 45 pi for that, or 17.31 meters squared, squared because it's area, or 17.3 meters squared. Okay, so important that you know how to get the arc and the area of a sector comes up more often than you think on the course. So very good to be able to do that one. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies, and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.